soon because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We sang the song this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Day by morning, new mercies I see. Very clear here that in verse 23, it's God's love and compassion that from verse 22 is written. Verse 23 says, they, what is they? They are his love and compassion that doesn't fail. And they are new morning by morning, for great is thy faithfulness. With Jesus in our hearts as faithful Christians, we become new every day. As his mercies become new, his faithfulness towards us, we become new. God is full of compassion and it never fails. His compassion shows up new every day. Come back to our study there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, our main text. We'll see here in verse 12, Paul writes, he says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. The Lord make you. We know that God is the only one that can make us do anything. We've established that no one can make us do anything. But God can. And his prayer there is the Lord, I want you to make them to increase and abound in love. His mercy and love and compassion never fails. Now, I don't know what your situation is this morning. I don't know what kind of circumstances you're under this morning. Perhaps you're under some pressure that's a little over and above the norm. Perhaps you're being mistreated. Perhaps you're being mishandled. Perhaps you're being misrepresented. And all these things run against us, and yet we're supposed to have compassion of the heart. This is why Paul prayed as he did. He knew then, as we know now, that we need an increase in compassion because the world is put in us. We're up against it. Praise the Lord that we have a compassion in God. He's the Jehovah driver and Jehovah that gives for all our needs. And in this case, He gives us our needs of compassion. And all that we need to help others. I love the poem that was read this morning. Remember, God is asking, What have you done to help someone lately? You're asking me to help this person. Not, what have you done? I ask you this morning, What have you done with your love and compassion that God has given you? Look again at verse 12. He says, Lord, make you to increase and abound in love for one another. To love one another, sometimes you know God makes you do that. Sometimes you really aren't pleased with Brother Ken. You just don't feel the love right now. And when you're feeling that, no, I might be feeling the same way about you. My point being is that the best love, of course, is that agape love, that unconditional love, that says the love is love for the sake of love and nothing in return. Total selfless love. And, and, and there's a demonstration of that clearly by God. When he wrote John 3.16, he gave his only son because he so loved the world. The demonstration of compassion and love. I challenge us to discover some of God we love in us this week coming and find something that we can do for to someone that shows that we love them and have compassion for them unconditionally. Holy place there in Thessalonians with 1 John chapter 4. All the way in the back of the Bible, just before Revelation, you'll find the book of Jude. And just before Jude, you'll find the books of John, first 1, 2, and 3. We're looking at 1 John this morning, chapter 4. 1 John, chapter 4, he holds us to task here, beginning in verse 4. He said, In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Hey, listen, it's clear here that God demonstrated the love that he had for the world, that he gave his only son to die for you and you and you and me and all of our sins, nailed to that cross and filled with all of Calvary. At a time where the hill was called the Holy God. The hill of the dead. The 
God sent His Son. And according to the word here in verse 11, it says that if you love God so much, then you ought to also love one another. God's love is not a noun, it's a verb, it's action words. When God loves you, He's doing something. When it comes to the love and compassion, God walks the walk and not just talks the talk. We should be so lucky. We should be so committed to God that we do the same. Love and compassion this morning. Love is the action that we take because of other people. And we take it on account of other people. The will of God is for us to take the love that we have for Him and He wants us to reach out to others with that very same love that we have for Him. First Thessalonians again. Well, this time, go to chapter 4. Back to First Thessalonians, go to chapter 4. I want you to see this running of one another. Paul was speaking to the church here. He's also speaking to us. It's so clear. First Thessalonians chapter 4, look at the beginning of verse 9. Paul writes, But it's touching brotherly love, he needs not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that ye set you to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commend you, that we may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. The essence of compassion is where the compassion we have for others in the time of need. Paul is writing here to the church that we need to love one another. He says in verse 9, I want to tell you about loving one another, but I really don't need to because God's already told you that's what you need to do. This isn't rocket science. We're the love of the brethren of the church. We're the love of the believer of God. He says in verse 10, that indeed you should go toward that brother and love that brother like you normally do. But you know what? You can do it even more. You can do it even a little bit better than you do doing right now. You may think you got it going on, but God says by the way of his words that he inspired Paul to write, he says in verse 10 that he increased more and more that love for one another. In verse 12, he clearly says, not only that, we need to do it in an honest fashion towards those that are without. We need to be loving one another that may be down on the luck right now, perhaps don't have a job, perhaps their income has been dwindled a little bit, perhaps they have illness in the family. It was time for us to step and love one another in a fashion where the people that have nothing, it was in that brethren, we would address them perhaps first in the list of our love and compassion. The essence of compassion is God. Then we see the expression of compassion that is needed. We express compassion by not just loving ourselves, and we do it by loving each other. And clearly in verse 12, back to the first Thessalonians chapter 3, our main text in verse 12, his prayer was that we would, in fact, increase our love for one another. With that hope of a godly love, that unconditional love, you know, the eternity of 1 John 4 and 21 says, As this commandment have we from him, in me, Jesus, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Sure, this is not news to us. I realize that we know this, but we need to realize that it's focused and it's fact based on his word. Not just because I said it or Brother Bill says it, it's because the word of God says it. Now by showing your love for the brethren, love each other, and you will show and tell that you're a Christian. The epitome of what a Christian is. There are people out there that are watching. They're seeing what you're doing. And you're a Christian not because you come to church. I'm going to answer. You're not a Christian just because you carry your Bible around, perhaps in the dashboard of your car, or open on the coffee table of your home. Not because you believe in the King James 1611 version, as we do here. But people, we know we can be Christians by loving one another, according to the Word of God. We need to demonstrate that love in deed as well as in word. Turn to John chapter 13. Jesus has a few words for us here. Regarding our compassion and our love for one another and the impact of it. John 